Hi everyone, it's Roy. I'm here at Intrinsic uh, Perennial Nursery with Brent. And I wanted to show you this real super garden. It's a uh, 14 foot across, or not for nine feet across, I'm sorry, 14 square feet. And it's beautifully done. And I, th I thought this would be a good example of how you can do wonderful things with uh, native plants, especially in small spaces. So Brent's here and I want, he's gonna share with you how he started the garden and also what plants are in it. So Brent, take so it away. It's a, a circular gravel garden and it's all planted under this Taxodium Shawnee Braid, which is a beautiful shade of green and texture as well, fine texture. Oh, that's a beautiful plant and it's available locally. Yeah, we got ours from what was Beaver Creek, now uh, okay. Breezy Hill. Okay, very good. And this garden has some of my favorite plants in it, including Euphorbia corallata, um, the white native Euphorbia spurge, um, Pennis, uh, carrot, Pennsylvanica straw hat, and that kind of that. that kind of connects the plants together, the yeah, texture of the sedge. Yeah, it's kind of the matrix or the, the bones of the garden. Yeah, see how it flows through here, a very soft texture. Nice rhizomatous arching form. And then tucked in, we have Muhlenbergia cuspidana. Let's get a look at that. Prairie satin grass. Oh, okay. Very fine textured grass, nearly... Um, nearly inconspicuous flowers. Is that available here? Do you have that for sale? Yes, Very we, good. we sell one gallon and we have... And gallon. what was it again? Um, Muhlenbergia cuspidata, okay. prairie satin grass. Prairie satin grass. You hear that, everybody? And, and it then, needs, uh, I have to say, it does need well-drained soil. Yeah. So we have a few dahlia. Um, dahlia foliosa is the purple. And that was not even planted here. It jumped over from the gravel garden oh, okay. over there. So it found its own home. That's we cool. Have Dahlia candidum and Dahlia purpureum, the purple prairie clover. Um, another one I didn't plant here, but jumped over from that gravel garden is this Panicum shribnerianum, now a different genera. Um, and then over here we have white yarrow, the Achillea millifolium, which I just collected seed on today. And now receding from our original one plant, we have Monarda bradburyana, Bradbury's Monarda, um, June blooming. Mm -hmm. Looks good, the seed heads are beautiful. Yeah, they last into the winter. Um, I clean it up in March by either burning or uh -huh. cutting that I back. see you have a sedum tucked at the base of the tree. Yeah, so that sedum, Weihenstefner's gold, very oh, cool. dependable, evergreen, great sedum. We've so got a lot in here. Uh, Heuchera, Richardsonii, tough as nails. Yes, it is. Um, That's a good, and that one again, a good Euchra, right? Jumped over from the other gravel garden on its own. And I have to say, it has limited issues with bacterial infections, like a lot of the Euchras do that that we grow, because it, it's used to this high humidity and heat. So genetically, it's much easier to grow, uh, not relating to the bacterial infections that other Euchras get. Uh, this is super. I got it. Why did you collect seed on the uh, yarrow? What was special characteristics about that? Um, well, we grow and sell it for green roofs. So this is okay. a very All right. so you got a unique purpose for it. Tough, uh, drought, so drought tolerant. Back plant. to durability. Great pollinator yeah. plant. Okay, well, thanks Brent for the tour of the 14 square foot garden and it's cool because you can see what you can do in small spaces using native plants and it, it's not uh it's not something you have to constantly irrigate and i don't know how often you're out here weeding it's probably not that much at all yeah i might weed um a few minutes every week okay all right everybody have fun with new thoughts take care of yourselves bye